So you can adjust the lighting. Um, you can put up to 10 lights into your, uh, your set. You can put as many cameras in your set as you want, so there's no limitation on the amount of cameras you want to use for your coverage, um, which I'm sure will make you happy when you come to the real world. You have lots of different choices. Um, and let's go ahead and now just render this movie out. I um, just want to confirm my output settings or something um, of value here. We'll just do a 640 by 280 at uh, 2997, and we'll render out a, uh, a quick time movie. And we will apply just a simple uh, compressor to, uh, to make it look good here. Let's go ahead and try a um, MPEG-4. So let's go OK and hit all right. And now to render my movie, I can just right click and render out. Uh, my image. My, my uh, lights and cameras won't show up in my render, but my paths will, so I can actually hide that and clean up my set. Um, so I think I'm, I'm all set. I can go ahead and render that. Um, now you see we can render audio, and I'll, I'll show you that here in a second, but let's just show you how quick it is to render. Um, you can render the whole action or a just a, a portion of it, a range of that take, um, if you want to save yourself some file size and um, you know you're only going to be using four seconds of a camera. Um, you can render out just a range of that take. So let's go ahead and just render. Um, we'll save it to my desktop, and we'll just call it take. That's fine. And you'll see that it renders pretty quickly. Um, for uh, 3D animation rendering, this is uh, really basically happening almost near one-to-one -one on the fly. Um, so there's not a lot of time of sitting around and waiting for renders, ordering pizza, and, and watching 1%. 1%. And you just sit there and you watch it for a couple hours. So this uh, will make you a lot more happy. Um, obviously, it'll depend on what settings you put. Um, if you go out of 1080i, it'll take a little bit longer. But um, the most I've seen is maybe like a 1 to 10 ratio. So if you're rendering a, uh, you know, a one-minute clip and you want to render at the highest possible uh, output, it maybe takes 10 minutes. Um, so we can go ahead and view that now. Um, Let's see, I need to open it up in, oh, it's going to play for us. No, it's not. Let me, let me play it in my other player. It doesn't like the quick times. So you see the camera cuts happening that we, you know, we determined. We've got all our lighting settings in there. Um, my guy who's not paying attention as he's driving. <laughs> so you, you can see how, you know, as a, as a filmmaker, it really allows you to pre-plan your shots and, um, you know, make sure you're, you've got the coverage you need. Your editor can tell you, you know, you need an insert shot before you ever um, actually went out and shot it. So, you, you know, you can get all the coverage you need when you're on set. Um, Really quick, let me just uh, show a little audio. Um, let's go ahead and open up just a, a new set. Um, so if you're working on a project, maybe you've got uh, four locations. You can have all of those you know, locations or sets here in the same project, so you don't have to constantly be uh, opening new uh, projects to get into a new environment. But let's really quickly just bring in a character and uh, drag and drop them in. Let's just say uh, female adult here. And just drag and drop into the scene. And let's bring in some audio now as well. And you'll see they'll actually lip sync animate the audio file. So we've got just a, a couple examples for you. Certainly you want to bring in your own scripts. Um, but let's just take uh, one of the examples like, uh, can I have a martini? And let's go ahead and, and have her say her line. So we'll, we'll just jump right to a headshot on her. And let's get her to, to say her line. So we just load our. Can I have a martini? Now she automatically, you know, lip syncs, uh, and we're working on making that even better, um, so that the the animation of the lips is better. We're working on facial expressions, um, which is another thing that um, we currently don't have. In, at the beginning, I said, you know, hand drawn storyboards. Um, one of the things that they offer that this kind of animation software cannot is that tone, that emotion, that mood that you get out of it. Um, we are working on being able to, to smile and cry and laugh and have all those animations. Um, and we do have the body language that can really help you sell that. Um, I think you can certainly convey it. The first piece I showed was, um, you know, 
fairly emotional, but yet there's no facial expression. So you can convey that in your, your animation or your previs, your storyboarding through the use of music, um, through the use of the body language, and, and even your shot selection. Um, so you, you've got your um, ability to, to lip sync animate, uh, your own dialogue, bring in some audio tracks as well, and then render out, you know, essentially uh, your movie before you go shoot it. Um, any questions? Yes? You bring in a JPEG, does it keep those features? In terms of? Um, if, if you brought a JPEG in of, a, say, a person, a yeah. face, uh -huh. does it hold those features? Or? Yes, yes. So basically what you would do, you've got your character here. Um, I would just, you're going to use a little bit of Photoshop. Um, I'm just going to go into her, her facial texture. You'll see it's just um, a flattened out, kind of creepy looking skin. Um, <laughs> Uh, of our character. Here's her teeth, obviously. you got one eye, so everything just mirrors. Um, you've got her hair here. So you could go in and you could change her hair color by just painting this texture in Photoshop or paint. Um, and what you would do here is just take a headshot of yourself from a front-on view, you know, resize it accordingly, and, and just crop it in. Um, you know, with a little bit of Photoshop skills, you could you know, match your skin tone to the rest of the texture and swatch that so it looks um, just like you, and we've done that with quite a bit of. Uh, yeah, so, but then, when you get into the virtual part, it. Yeah, it, because it's, it's what it's going to do is, as long as you're maintaining this layout of the texture, it's going to map on to our character properly. Um, so our character on the inside is really just this skeleton, but with this texture um, wrapped around this mesh. Um, so as long as you edit that texture, it's going to still have all the same look at eyeball controls, uh, lip syncing, and everything. How about on the cars? Do you have a catalog of like all the different makes? And yes, we do. And actually, one of the things that uh, I'm glad you brought that up, um, in terms of bringing in custom content, I mean, certainly we've got um, quite a bit of vehicles, probably around 50 to 75, I'd estimate, right now. Um, and they're all interactive, you know. So the tanks, the Hummers, the sports cars, you can click on the trunk, the hood, the doors, they'll all open with just one click. Um, but we are, in our new version, uh, we'll be able to import models from third-party packages. So other programs out there, um, such as Maya, uh, 3D Studio Max, or these high-end um, 3D animation programs, they output geometry files. So um, Antics is being used on the, the Chronicles of Narnia right now, and they had this high-end visual effects previs team, the kind of previs you would see on Superman or Spider-Man, and they've got all these assets, all these characters, vehicles already built. Um, with our new version of the software, we were able to import that all into Antics and maintain that point-and-click interact, uh, interactive uh, characters. Um, any other questions? In terms of like a period piece kind of thing, is that what you're saying? Or? Either like, um, like 70s or even farther back, maybe like medieval. Yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah. On our forum, we've been getting a lot of requests for content. I've started a thread where people can, you know, tell us what you want and we'll make it. Um, so, you know, we've got our Western scene with cowboys and Indians. We've got our uh, medieval scene with kings, queens, knights, jousts, all that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're constantly going to be probably bi-weekly launching new content packs, and those will range between five and, and twenty dollars for those new themed content packs. You choose what you want. Um, I should also mention I, I did say we we have our uh, our seventy-five dollar student license. Um, the software is free for educators, um, and we'll also have uh, basically a V3 light um, that will be free to download, and it's a per permanent license. Um, it's fully functional. It's everything you see here, but with limited content. So what we're, we're kind of going in a new business direction. You can actually use Antics for free come next week, but you have to buy the content to, to you know, what, whatever content you want. Um, the, the full version that I said, the 595 version, comes with all the content and all the content we produce in the future you get for free. As a student, the $75 license, you're getting all the content and all the content packs. So it does end up making more sense to pay the $75 and get all the content as opposed to using the free version. But it's, and, you know, certainly you know, try it out on the free version first.